actually going to go ahead and get started since we're recording this webinar. Um, if others join us, that's great. Um, and this will be posted later for you to review or for you to share with other spiritual advisors um, as we go into the year. I'll ask Father Anthony to pray for us and then I'll give us a little orientation for the evening and we'll jump in. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen, O heavenly King, comforter, spirit of truth, present in all places, filling all things, treasure of blessings and giver of life, come and abide us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls. So good on Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord, we ask you that you bless the work of our hands, inspire us and direct us as we follow your commandment to make disciples of all nations. We ask this in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And thank you, Father Anthony. Um, I just want to let you all know, please feel free to keep the chat going if you have comments or feedback as we go. Um, if you don't mind, if you have a question using the Q&A, well, we'll try to answer them as we go as is appropriate. And if there are any that maybe should wait to the end, we'll keep them there. So it, it's nice if you use the Q&A feature um, for that. Um, I am, Chris, if you don't know, I'm Christina Andreessen. I'm the Director of Ministries for OCF. And I feel really grateful tonight to be joined by Steve Christoforo from Y2AM and the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese. Um, OCF and Y2AM do a lot of collaborative work together and we're um, really grateful for his presence today. We're gonna to be telling you about a collaboration we're doing for you all with him today. And also Father Anthony Salzman, who is the spiritual advisor for the University of Georgia, as well as the Southeast Regional Spiritual Advisor. And if you ever need to model your spiritual advisorship off of anyone, I always recommend you learn from Father Anthony. So we're really grateful to have him here tonight um, to, to share with you as all, with you as well. Um, so we are going to, I wanna start off first by thanking you all for taking some time this evening to be with us and thanking you for giving your time, talent and energy um, towards our college students. It's super crucial. I'm sure you all have been thinking and about this a lot and praying about this a lot as we enter this new school year, that they have good, strong support and healthy community. Um, we all have ha experienced this last year and a half very differently. Um, and I think in particular, our college students have in this very, we always talk about what a transitional and crucial time college is for the formation of you as a person. And we have had a lot of students who've had a really strange and difficult experience as part of that really crucial time of formation. So as we start to see things open back up, as we start to see them going back onto their campuses, um, I think we're gonna see, and you may already have seen some, um, some spiritual and mental health and even physical nor social things that maybe were covered up a little bit before the pandemic by just the busyness of life and the, the ease of social dynamics. So I'm grateful that you all are going to be there walking alongside these students as, um, as they're entering this. And we are praying for you as you do that. I was wondering if you all could type in the chat, what word right now you currently uh, comes to mind when you think about campus ministry and this re-entry into the, um, the campus life? Exciting. Thanks, Father Alexi. Ever-changing. Hospitality. Oh, I love that, John. Challenging. Corona warped. I like that adjective. That is great. That's a great way to think about it, I think. Don't know what to expect. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Well, the word I have been thinking about a lot and, and I hope I can put on your radar as well is opportunity. I think we have a real opportunity here because of our Corona warped um, existence right now, this, all the changes we've gone through, um, I think there's really an opportunity to re-engage students. There's an opportunity for them to be asking questions in a new way. Um, there's an opportunity for us as ministers to reconsider our approach. Like, why not? If there was ever a time to try something totally new, um, a, a, a time of reset is really a great opportunity for that. There's really an opportunity to mentor and lift up new students, students that haven't really had that kind of mentorship outside of um, their own homes for a while now, and really opportunities to reach students who are seeking 
truth, who are seeking the Orthodox faith. So I'm excited to hope um, that I hope tonight is a really good kickoff for you all to start thinking about what opportunities do we see in our campus ministries and what opportunities can we really um, build off of, even though there are all these difficulties that we're kind of, we're sitting with as well. Um, and spiritual advisors especially are really the ones, as I'm sure you've experienced, are, who provide stability for OCF chapters and for OCF students who provide mentorship and discipleship for OCF students. Um, and most importantly, who pr provide an invitation and connection to the sacramental life of the church. Um, we, as I say often for OCF, we are not a parachurch organization. We're just there to make sure that the campus gets pointed back to the liturgy. And with the reopening of most of your churches, I'm sure at this point, and the reopening of campuses, we need our spiritual advisors to be on campus and offering the full sacramental life to our students. Um, along with that, before I pass the torch off to Father Anthony for him to tell you a little bit about his own experience, I just wanted to remind you of a few things. Um, as you're getting ready for this semester, uh, start early. Now is the time to be reaching out to your um, your local student leader if you have one identified. And if you don't have one identified, um, just start um, thinking back if you if you can to who was around as a, so a freshman or a sophomore pre coronavirus if you haven't been engaging with them um, and to really take time to sit down plan with them make sure they've done what they need to do to get your chapter in good order with your university um, if you have questions about what that looks like if you're new to this um, maybe there's some of you who have moved campuses or moved into a new position since um, 2019, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, um, to the OCF staff. My email is just christina at ocf.net. I would be happy to help you get situated. Um, really want you to plan ahead for weekly meetings on campus. That's always the ideal, weekly meetings on campus. And I'm excited to share a couple of new resources I have for you as you're getting, uh, as you are preparing that I would, uh, I'm going to have Steve drop in the chat for me as I talk, just so you have new things to explore. Um, the first is a, called the Holistic Living Guide, and actually um, our student ministry intern, Anna Korchak, uh, developed this resource. It is a guide with uh, articles, journaling topics, uh, group activities, um, uh, action items for you to do as a, as a group or in your own life. Um, all of the material in it is written by Orthodox um, authors, and it covers physical, mental, um, social, and spiritual health. So we really, it's a holistic living guide. We really wanted to start addressing all of these things that we know there's going to be a lot more um, potential struggles in all of these areas. I think that was already something that was um, on campus needing to be addressed, but I think especially now for us to really bother to take the time to talk about um, our, our whole being and the healing of our whole life in Christ. And um, so this is a really awesome resource for you and for your chapter. There's not any necessary, necessarily one way to use it. You might look at it and say like, we're gonna go out of order. We're gonna just take the journal you know, topics or we're gonna just read the articles and talk about it. it there's really a lot of flexibility for you, um, but you could use it and have a really rich OCF semester. The second one, and if this is something of interest to you, I need you to be super on top of it. Like yesterday, um, we have an opportunity, another collaborative opportunity to partner with the Relationship Project, which is, which is a resource from Faith Tree Resources, um, where normally, if you have know about the Relationship Project, it is a full curriculum, really high quality that covers um, identity, uh, real intimacy, and mental health. And um, it's normally quite expensive and we have an opportunity for you right now to have almost all of it paid for by OCF for you. If you are interested in this opportunity, you want to be your chapter to, chapter to go through the relationship project this fall, you need to email um, our, our partner in this um, Anastasis Ferillis, um, like tomorrow and say, hey, I want to learn more about this and see if I can make it happen on my campus um, because we're kind of coming up close on the deadline for us to be able to order the materials for you all in time. Um, the third thing, if you missed it, we have a new podcast that came out this um, last 
uh, this last year. It's a Bible study podcast um, going through the wisdom of Sirach. The wisdom of Sirach was written for ed basically life advice for young people. So it's a, a very short episodes um, going in the order of the way that the Orthodox study Bible has broken it down for students. It's very casual, lots of just opening up questions and conversation around it. It'd be a great resource for you if you wanna do a Bible study this semester. And then finally, if you, your students are looking for more, one really great pandemic opportunity that we created and that's going to stick with us is our OCF small groups. These are male, female, gender separated groups led by OCF alumni who've been trained by OCF. They are virtual groups of four to six students, um, but it's just another really great opportunity for students who maybe need a little bit more, who need that a um, more intimate setting of just the girls, just the guys. Um, the, the website currently has information from last semester, but in the next probably two weeks, registration will open for um, fall small groups if you have a student who's interested. All right, I hope that makes you feel a little more equipped and excited and to start planning for this coming semester and the activities you could do with your chapter. Um, I'm going to pass it to Father Anthony, who's going to talk a little bit more about what does a good spiritual advisor look like and what can he tell you from his own experience that we hope you all can carry into your ministry this year. Thank you, Christina. And Christina says, I'm such a good spiritual advisor because I make a lot of mistakes so you don't have to. So. Let's proceed. I'm going to steal a little of your thunder, Steve, uh, from Be the Bee. Uh, just a few things to think about in being a, a, a good spiritual advisor. Be open. Be disciplined. Be prayerful. Be friendly. Empower students. Be responsive to God's leading through the Holy Spirit and cultivate leaders. I got caught short one year because I, I, I ended up with two OCFs and I didn't see it coming. They did not mix at all. And it was, so it was a bit of a disaster, but I learned cultivate leaders from very early on. Uh, Father John Reeves, who was up in Pittsburgh or up in uh, Penn State, uh, he's been very effective in ministry, and what he told us when we came there as OCF RSAs years ago, he said, read Matthew 28, 16 through 20, and that, of course, is a great commission, and he says, go and make disciples of all nations, and in this case, all students, not just trying to gather Orthodox students, but we're the light of the world. This is the church. This is the body of Christ. So we have an obligation really to be accessible. And if anybody's been on campuses lately, we know that we are persona non grata on campuses because uh, the church is to blame for all the problems in the world. And so we really can't even open our mouths. Um, so with that in mind, I've been my outreach has been to be present, to make disciples, to take people. It's the most expensive way, but the most effective way. Sometimes slower is faster. Just take people by the hand and walk them into the kingdom of God. So I go on campus Thursdays from 11 to 3. I set up my easel and I paint. And uh, I'm not very flashy. I don't attract a lot of attention. And probably less than one-tenth of one percent stop to talk to me, but that's where it begins. So I'm also a member of the Campus Ministry Association on campus, and that's very helpful because you can get to know professionals, people that have been trained to do this. Uh, when I first went there, it was a little awkward because I thought we had to agree theologically, and we had everybody there, and after a while, I realized we don't. There are people they're struggling to find faith and to live out faith. And I can learn a lot from each of them. And I have, uh, but I was vice president one year and that put me in charge of programming for our CMA. Our CMA meets on a Wednesday. Well, it turns out the big topic because I brought somebody in to 
talk to us about free speech on campus. And so they came in and it turns out that there was a street preacher there who was causing a lot of fasaria, a lot of ruckus. And uh, he, our president, a woman from the CMA went there and he uh, called her a harlot and tell her she was going to hell. And uh, of course he didn't know anything about her. It was just a shock technique. So we had all this big discussion. Well, I go on campus to paint on Thursday and a kid says to me, the street preacher's here. And I said, should we go talk to him? I said, yeah, let's. So I said, let me take this icon of the resurrection. And as we were walking, I said, what are we going to say? He says, I don't know. I said, let's say a prayer. Uh -huh. So we said a prayer. And as we walk up, there's a huge circle around mm -hmm. him. There's policemen there. Uh, there's faculty there and a lot of students. And they are just heckling back and forth. So as I approach, they say, don't touch him. They will arrest you. I said, OK, well noted. So I walk into the center and I introduce myself and I say, what's your name? My name is Dennis. And I said, you know, how long you've been doing this? I asked him, are you very effective at it? Does anyone ever convert? And we got to talking to each other. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm over there struggling in anonymity and you have a nice crowd here. Can I borrow this crowd for a minute? He said, sure, go ahead. So I said to the people, I said, I said, this is a community. And someone shouted, he's not part of our community. We voted him off the island. So I said, well, I said, if you know something, if you're guided by the Holy Spirit, shouldn't you reach out to Dennis and try and make connection? I said, this is easy. This is hard. So I turned back to Dennis and I said, Dennis, I said, do you know what this is? And I held up an icon of the resurrection. He says, no. And I said, it's our soteriology. He says, what's that? Of course, I knew he'd say, what's that? But I said, this is our theology of salvation. And I said, look at Christ. He is grabbing Adam's wrist. I said, hold out your wrist. And I grabbed it and everybody went, because oh, I touched him. But he says, I said, Adam is not grabbing his hand. Christ is doing the work. And he, and I showed him the doors. He conquered death by death because he was the only sinless one. And he says, I like that. I said, keep doing what you're doing. You're preaching the gospel. That's what St. John the Baptist did. But John had a lot of converts. Try and love people. Try and help them find the kingdom of God. And I said, do you want to keep this? He says, yes. Could I keep it? I said, okay. So we parted ways and people cheered and followed me as I left. But that became the talk of the town. Little did I realize the dean of students was there. He was standing next to the police officer. And as I walked in, he said, watch this because he knew a little bit about me, we're good friends. And so I say all this just to say that it's the making of disciples and we have to trust that the Holy Spirit is working. We don't, I don't like the bait and switch technique. I don't like trying to sell them one thing and then they discover orthodoxy is something else. We just have to be authentic we have to be disciplined, we have to be prayerful, we have to be friendly, and we have to empower students so that they make it their own. Students need organization. They need our leadership to gather them together, but they have to become the heart and soul of it. And then we, like, like in this little event, we, we stepped out in faith. We didn't know where it was going. We didn't know where we would land. But we prayed and we responded to the Holy Spirit. So if that's of any help, glory to God. If not, go out and do your own thing. Do it your way. See, let God bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Father Anthony. I'd love if you guys have questions for Father Anthony, feel free to drop them in the Q&A as we go. We'll pick them up at the end. And I think now I will... 
pass it to Steve for him to tell you a little bit about his own ministry experience, as well as the collaborative opportunity I hinted at towards the beginning for you all to benefit from. Yeah. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Father Anthony. Uh, OCF is an organization that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I did not actually participate as a college student uh, when I was on campus. So sometimes we have to have patience as people who are chaplains, right? My first experience with OCF was when I was at seminary. Uh, I actually got blessed to be uh, placed on one of the campuses near us in Boston, and I got to minister to the good people at uh, Harvard and MIT. That was my first experience uh, at OCF, and here I am years later on the board, so you too can grow up. And uh... <laughs> But no, but, but seriously, it, it is a wonderful organization, and I think for me, uh, there's something really special about the fact that I, enc that I encountered it um, at seminary in particular, as I was preparing to kind of do ministry work. And I was at seminary with Christina, actually. I was at seminary with at, uh, at least one of our fathers who's in the uh, chat here right now. Um, and it was one of the most formative experiences of my life. And it just occurs to me, right? It, maybe it's an obvious thought. That's not an opportunity that a lot of us get, um, especially when we're uh, out there ministering to folks uh, on a college campus, especially if we're lay people ministering to folks on a college campus. And preparation and education is such an important thing and all sorts of other industries, right? I was a lawyer before I went to seminary and there was all kinds of continuing education and so forth. And sometimes it can feel like we're being thrust into these situations, especially when we're on the newer end of things and maybe don't have a lot of life experience and the failures and mistakes that sort of Father Anthony was alluding to, right? When you're, when you're brand new and you don't have any sort of preparation, that can be a very stressful thing. And that's why um, at our uh, department at the uh, Archdiocese of Y2AM, we created an online uh, training course to help people um, take their first steps into ministry and even refine their next steps into ministry if they've been involved for a while. And it's an online training course that we've put together called Effective Christian Ministry. And uh, it's totally online course, take it one's own pace. We have about 800 uh, people who are currently in enrolled in the course. And I mean, everybody from senior clergy with decades of experience, whether on campus or in parishes to um, college students who are volunteering at summer camp for the first time. So it's there's something really encouraging about the fact that we can all, whatever our level of experience, continue to refine those skills, to continue to sharpen the saw, uh, as some people are fond of saying. And I'll, I'll summarize it for you, right? There's the, the backbone of the course is a presentation of the basic needs in the life of a young person, the five basic needs of the, of, in the life of a young person. And it's really an opportunity to sort of organize them and help think them through step by step. I'm going to put them in the chat here. And as we talk about them for a second, you're going to see that it's not necessarily something new, right? We're not, I mean, we're in the church, right? We're not necessarily saying anything new. We're figuring out new ways to speak to today's needs, right? So um, when you look at these needs, which I'm going to put in the chat right now, you're going to see in the blog post that Christina posted, you know, some of those best practices track with these needs. You're going to hear in the story that Father Anthony even suggested some of those, um, some of his pastoral interactions that really meet these needs. Five core needs, and they're in this order in particular for a reason. One, sort of most essentially, young people, college students in particular, need to know who Jesus is, right? Like we, as, as, as ministers to them, as chaplains to them, whatever we are, we're ultimately introducing them to him. And without him, there is nothing, right? I mean, that, that, that core of who we are is to know who Jesus is. And two, right, that next need is for young people, for college students to know who they truly are. And that's a need that flows, actually. When we know Christ, we can know ourselves in relation to him, right? We can know Christ first and then know ourselves in relation to him. And that third need is to know that we belong to the full community of the church, which is something that a lot of young people struggle with, right? If we can know who Christ is, we know who we are, we know where we fit. We know that we have a place in the full body of the church, which can be especially hard when it comes to college students, right? Because Christina's point earlier, OCF is not meant to be a parachurch thing that exists on the side, but young, co young college students can sometimes feel disconnected because they're off on campus, sometimes without that support, right? And that's that third need. Fourth need, to be empowered with a faith that makes a difference. There are so many bright and articulate and motivated young people on college campuses who are doing wonderful things, who are empowered to make a difference with what they believe. And I think sometimes as, as more senior Orthodox Christians, we don't empower young people in the church. 
to, to, to show them that the faith makes a difference and can change the way that they live and change the way that they interact with people in their wider community. So that's that fourth need. And the fifth then is to be equipped with the teachings of the Orthodox faith, right? We ground them in who Christ is, who they are in relationship to the Lord, um, that they belong in the community of the church, that this matters, that they can be empowered with a faith that makes a difference. And then we can equip them with the teachings of the faith, right? You might've heard people start with, you have to start with why before you can get to the what. I think sometimes as ministers, as chaplains, we start with the what without giving young people a why. This is, this is the way to start with the why, and the why ultimately is the alpha and the omega himself, and it all flows out from the Lord. Um, you'll see a couple of uh, best principles in the blog that Christina uh, referenced. I mean, again, these things really like map onto these basic needs. Um, you know, in the blog, you'll see that the, how important it is that your spiritual life as a chaplain is authentic. That goes to that first need, actually knowing Jesus. Young people are gonna know the Lord through us as their spiritual advisors, as their chaplains. Our spiritual life has to be authentic. If they're gonna know him, they're gonna know him through us. It's gotta start with us and our own repentance and our own walk with the Lord, right? That's a basic need in the life of a young person and the basic responsibility that we have as a spiritual advisor. You'll see also to genuinely care about students in that blog piece, that's to know who they truly are, right? College st students need to know who they are in Christ, that second need that they have, and your love for them helps them understand who they are. Sometimes young people can feel very disconnected, very overlooked, but your genuine care for them helps ground them in that relationship with Christ they, as they see that love of Christ coming through you. You'll see in that blog post, right, um, your appro how approachable you are, how welcoming you are, that campus ministry is a priority for you. That grounds them in the fuller community of the church. It leads them back to the liturgy, as Christina was saying before, right? It grounds them in something bigger than just this tiny little sub-community on a campus that's somewhere out in the middle of the nowhere. The tone that you have set helps bring college students into the larger community of the church through that Eucharistic table, right? That's where OCF is constantly pointing people back to. But young people are used to over be being overlooked. But if, if they know that they matter to you, that makes a difference. If they know that campus ministry is a priority for you, that makes a difference. Your leadership style is collaborative and communicative. This is something Father Anthony stressed very strongly. That empowers young people with a faith that makes a difference, right? This takes young people from being passive participants in ministry or passive receptacles of knowledge, as if all we're doing is plugging their brains with a USB and downloading orthodox facts into their brains. But when we empower them with a faith that makes a difference, we, we show them that we believe in them and that we want to be collaborative with them and that we want to communicate with them because we respect them as equals, as adults who have a seat at the table. That makes a difference. And they want to, of course, know that you as their spiritual advisor know what you're talking about and how to talk about it. That's that fifth need, right? To be equipped with the teachings of the Orthodox faith. So again, this course just tries to take and distill some of that experience that is born of wisdom to try to make it a little bit um, uh, easy to understand, methodological, help us walk through some of these basic needs and the ways that we can meet those needs in youth and young adult ministry. And it's just as uh, relevant on a campus as it is in a parish, as it is in a home. Um, and I think this is really honestly, at, uh, in terms of our youth and young adult ministry work, the most important work that we've done. Um, some of the good uh, feedback that we've gotten is actually somebody really important in the life of uh, OCF. Father Michael Nasser, uh, who's now a priest in the Detroit area, has a really wonderful uh, career ministering to young people for many decades. He was part of the refounding of OCF in the 2000s. I mean, he really speaks incredibly highly of this course. Um, I've had a chance to talk to him about it many, many times. I think if somebody who has that many decades of experience can learn something and see ministry with fresh eyes as a result of this educational opportunity, I think it's going to work for anybody from senior priest down to first time volunteer college students. Um, so this is a, hopefully is an opportunity for your continued growth as a spiritual advisor, right? We want our young people to grow. We also need to grow with them. This is an opportunity and I'll, I'll turn it over to you, Christina, in terms of how you can take advantage of this opportunity. Sure. Um, Steve, if you don't mind dropping the where to register link in the chat while I do that, that would be great. Um, so we have this opportunity for OCF advisors to purchase effective Christian ministry, effective Christian ministry with our discount code, which will bring the cost down um, by 50%. Um, so you can register at the link that uh, Steve just put in the chat with the code OCF21. You do need to register by next 
Friday the 30th, right? Is that right, Steve? Yes. At the end of the month, yeah. Yeah, the end of the month. So you have till the end of the month to sign up. Um, And then once you have registered with our 50% discount code, um, if you complete the modules by September 1st, so it's about six weeks you'll have. When I personally went through Effective Christian Ministry, it took me about five hours total. Um, it's not a very large commitment because everything is done very efficiently and effectively and the materials are very clear. So about five hours of commitment. If it's completed by September 1st, um, please make sure you click complete the lesson at the end of each lesson um, because the platform that it's on otherwise won't register that you actually watch the whole video. Um, and then if you send in to me at Christina at OCF.net, your certificate of certificate of completion, which you receive when you've com- gone through all of the effective Christian ministry modules, as well as a list of any students you currently know about on your campus. We, we do ask parishes to tell us about students, but sometimes you catch them in a different time than we do. So we'd like you to tell us what you know about who's on campus as well by September 5th. So you have a couple more days after you complete the course to send those things into me, then we will, OCF will reimburse you the full amount that you did, the 50% uh, discounted amount that you paid for Effective Christian Ministry. We will reimburse you entirely as well as um, send you an exclusive OCF advisor package that we're putting together for you, a small gift of our appreciation and something for you to be able to take on campus to feel especially official um, on our behalf to make sure that people know that you are coming on behalf of OCF. So again, you can have till next Friday if you wanna take advantage of this opportunity to purchase Effective Christian Ministry for 50% off. You have till September 1st to complete the course and you have till September 5th to send me the certificate of completion as well as the students you know about on your campus and you will be completely reimbursed for having taken the course as well as receive our gift. If for some reason you have already purchased Effective Christian Ministry or even have already gone through the modules of Effective Christian Ministry, if you send me by September 5th the certificate of completion and your the students you know about on your campus, we will still reimburse you the 50% of the um, cost. The thir- is it 3750? I'm gonna say it wrong. Yeah, I think it's 3850. Math 30, is hard. It's half of 75. Math is hard. Math, half of 75. We will still reimburse you the amount that we are we are currently committing to covering for other spiritual advisors, as well as send you our um, thank you appreciation gift for you to take onto campus. So even okay. if you've already taken it, even if you've already got the you've already paid for it once before, we want to make this offer open to you. Um I really, like I said, I have been doing OCF ministry for a 10 years now. Um, I was involved as a student leader before that. I had the joy of helping or seeing effective Christian ministry be developed along the way. But when I took it as a course, I, I think like what, what Steve said about reaffirming what we maybe already think we know, but giving us fresh eyes to look at it and the right ordering. It was, it was really wonderful for me. And in fact, I actually went through the course with some young adults at my home parish. And that was totally transformative for the way that our young adults then thought about ministry and collaboratively planned for our year together. So totally awesome opportunity, wonderful um, course. And we really are excited that we're able to work with Steve and his office to offer this for you um, at a discounted rate potentially at a completely free rate if you complete the course. um, And we're really excited to be offering that. Um, At this time, I just wanna open it up. I wanna make sure I didn't miss any, I don't have any open questions right now, but if you do have any open questions, oh, Father Anthony has one. He rate, he's a panelist and he's raising his hand. Well, I'm gonna let Father Anthony ask his question. And then if you have something on your mind that you want to drop in the Q and A, now is a great time for that. And um, we'll we'll go from there and we might even sign off early. I bet you've never been on a Zoom call that signed off early. Okay, Father Anthony, take it. Yeah, I just um, I wanted to say that the very opening video was really set your mind as to why this was important. And it was about a young woman who was going to all these groups growing up and committed and dedicated to the church. And then she got out of the group and wandered off. 
we lost her and because Steve had pointed out she wasn't connected to Christ. And so this is what led to Steve going back saying, what are we doing wrong here? Mm -hmm. And out of that grew this program. And uh, I did the, uh, the effective Christian ministry program. And it was very, I thought it was very good. Um, but you also, Steve, and I don't know if we're going to follow up on this. You, you cooked us up with groups of other parishes that have done this. Are we going to continue that? Um, that is something that we're currently developing. It's actually a, the, the next step for parishes that have taken the online course that want a little bit more support. Um, we're setting up a cohort program, actually, that's going to start in September and run through May. There's spots for 40 parishes that want to be involved in this process, up to six ministry leaders, clergy, lay, including young adults, per parish. So we're going to have room for up to 40 parishes to go through this nine-month intensive yet supportive learning community to continue to dig deeper into the into the, the framework and the skills that we're talking about in the course, and also uh, just connect to them with other parishes. Can sometimes ministry can be a very lonely and isolating thing. So it's really like an, a learning community that's going to be around some of these lessons and around some of these principles. And if people are interested on that, that's more of a parish opportunity uh, than kind of a, a, a an OCF chapter opportunity. But of course, you know. The, the, the lines between these couldn't kind of blur, right? As Christina was saying, the point is to keep leading people back to the table and back to the chapter, uh, to, the, to the parish. That opportunity can be found at effectivechristianministry.org slash cohort. We're actually currently um, accepting applications for, uh, for parishes that want to be part of that. So if, if, if you're already into the online course, if you love what you've learned, if you want to get even more support, that could be kind of that next step, a step for you as well. Okay, and I have actually participated in one of those, so that was interesting. I mean, you you you'd already started. This was last year, I think we did it. Do you, does that ring a bell? Um, we've done a couple of sort of mini mini retreats and mini kind of uh, uh, workshops based upon it. This is going to be kind of a, okay. like a nine month thing, a very 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 holding people's hands and supporting them for a very long process. There's a lot of depth. That's going to be with this one but also hopefully then equipping some of the people beyond the priest or the sort of go normal go-to people in your parish to feel like they could take on ministry opportunities so it's a really great opportunity um with that i still i don't see any questions which is great please um feel free always to reach out to me um i think my email got put in there but i will drop it in again just in case um Feel free to reach out to me about what's going on in your chapter, what support you need, um, what we can do to better serve you as advisors. Without you, OCF would not exist. The national office, we are here to support you. We are here to create experiences for your students that go beyond just their campus. But as I like to say, sometimes I feel like we provide some Christmas and Pascha types experiences types of experiences, but you guys, the spiritual advisors, the lay advisors, the people who are on the ground, you all are the ones who are really discipling young people to be everyday Christians. So I, again, I thank you so much for the work that you do, for the things that you provide our students with, for the love and guidance and care. Um, and if you are ever in need of further support or further resources from OCF, you have an idea for something you'd like to see from us, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to hear it. I'd love to see if we can make it happen. Um, Father Anthony, would you like to close us in prayer? I will. After just a, one, one more thing, a lot of campuses now are welcoming freshmen to their campuses. And uh, so they have this opportunity in our campus, it's called Fourth Quarter, where you all the campus ministries and any groups on campus can pay $100 and meet face-to-face -face parents and, and incoming students. Uh, and we have 42 days this summer where we go down to the campus for an hour, set up our materials, have a big icon of the resurrection. And if I do this for five years, then every student on campus will recognize me when I'm on campus. And it's just exposure because we're the best kept secret. People don't know about orthodoxy. Uh, so we have to start a conversation. So check out your campus and see how they deal with incoming students. That might be a good way to reach out. And we have developed some promotional materials that we're happy to share with anybody that we print and we give them out to them so they can take something with us with them. And who knows when it will become useful, but we're just doing it to reach out to everybody. So thank you, Christina and Steve, and for this 
energizing and a, a wonderful event. And for all the work you do, Christina, because you, uh, I think you stay up nights thinking of new ways to torture us and just give us so many creative opportunities. So that's great. We appreciate it. In the name of the Father and Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, you're a good God, loves humankind. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace and for the opportunity before us to get stretched in our own spiritual life, to be taken out of our comfort zone, but to really rely on you and respond to your leading and your mercy and your grace for the life of the world. We give you great honor and glory in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. All right. Good night, everyone. I'm muted. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Have a great night. I hope you've already left before I started talking on mute. Uh, thank you, guys.